Good morning, folks. We've got a nice sized filament snaking over the northeastern limb. I see two solar tornadoes there. We may also have some sunspots coming over the limb soon on the south with those bright field loops visible dancing in. The thin dark lines left and below the coronal hole have been our top eruption threats for 24 hours and this morning we had a destabilization and collapse of the trailing rope. The eclipsed images were during this event, but we can still tell that if any ejecta was present it would be minor to moderate in all likelihood. And that's about all there is to report from our star. Solar flaring remains very low, and those southern sunspots are taking their time to get it together. We have mixing potential at the trailing umbras with beta class in closing proximity. The solar wind is finally dying down now in both speed and density. The geomagnetic storms are finally ending too. You may remember that too many tropical storms or too strong of geomagnetic disruptions reduces the likelihood for a release in the ground. Well, the storm is ending and the corona hole still faces Earth. After the New Zealand quakes, the magnetic storms quashed the quake uptick, but this morning the above average seismicity returns where the line of significance is magnitude 4, so that means we had two above average quakes in that region, and another in Canada to the north as well. Rare location. We have a brand new view of Ceres. Not only is the crater with the bright spots now fully analyzed for elevation, but we just got the clearest shot of the bright spots ever. But we'll begin with the height, relative and exaggerated by JPL by a factor of 1.5. Blue is the lowest, and red into brown represents the highest points. You can see that the bright spots, the Ceres lights, are down near the lowest points. And now what so many of us have waited for. Folks, the latest orbit of dawn brings it closer to the surface than any previous pass, and it is yielding treasures. We can now get down through the glare in this composite image made to detail both the bright areas and the surrounding terrain. We can now eliminate many possibilities for what is causing these bright areas and zero in on the truth. More to come in this weekend's Fly on the Wall podcast at suspiciousobservers.org. Also linked for you is the August climate report for the United States. Mostly in focus is the temperature and precipitation effects of the current El Nino. Less than 40 days till observing the frontier, the leaves will be changing and the crisp autumn air will welcome the suspicious observers to Pittsburgh for our first conference ever. We've got professors, professionals, and independent researchers ready to detail the frontier of the sciences that have captured our attention so much over here. Ticket links are at suspiciousobservers.org. Top news on weather.com today is the Japan devastation from Etau. We've got Kilo rushing in right behind it. Heat and moisture rushing into the central United States bring severe storm alerts for the breadbasket tonight. There is a major convergence line developing in the northern Atlantic just west of Europe and precipitable water shows the convergence lines down under. We've got the wind map through the atmospheric layers and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.